This is the incredible true story of how a man used Reddit to save his brother's life. The only thing you need to know before we get into this post is that this happened during the Buffalo blizzard of 2022. Now, Buffalo, New York is known for its snowy winters, but the blizzard of 2022 has been called the storm of a lifetime. 48 inches of snow, that's 122 centimeters, fell in about 48 hours. With the wind chill, temperatures dropped to minus 30 Fahrenheit or 34 degrees Celsius, just incomprehensibly cold. The conditions were so bad that emergency services were suspended and tragically, 40 people died so without further ado let's get into this this is a post from r slash buffalo from the 24th of december 2022 titled i need urgent help my brother's been stuck in his car since afternoon he is near address removed he's running out of gas we tried our best to reach out to the fire department police and tow companies but didn't get any help yet please someone help me any help or suggestions would be really appreciated. Now, here is a comment from a local about the conditions in the area. Volunteer firefighter here. Our trucks cannot move in this snow. We are getting stuck. We cannot get to anyone at the moment. At least 50% of the town's fire apparatus are stuck somewhere. I hate to say this, but if you can contact him, tell him help is probably not coming. He's going to have to get resourceful. Knock on doors, do something. There's nothing we can do at the moment. We are snowed in the fire hall. And here is another comment from another user spore i live close by i can bring some gas and warm clothes probably if he's up for it i can walk him back to that fire hall i live near that area and now we're going to jump to a new post written by spore on r slash buffalo just a few hours later i saw another post on here saying somebody was stuck on street removed near crab apples well i think to myself hey i only live about half a mile from there i bet i could help this person and i made the decision to go he's been stuck there all day and his clothes were wet from the snow trying to leave so i knew he was in need of help so i'm getting myself ready i grab what little gas i have i grab some food and water in case he needs any and some new warm clothes and a blanket for him him. Then I gear myself up. I put on some thick hiking socks, sweatpants, a backpack to carry my gear, puffy snow pants, a Hanes white tee, two sweaters, a jacket, a high vis vest, thick leather winter gloves, insulated winter muck boots, a headband, and a motorcycle helmet to try and combat the snow and wind. That is how you know this is so treacherous. It's time to head out. It's about 11 p.m. Wind gusts are still ripping outside and snow drifts can bring the visibility down to zero. The motorcycle helmet is a mixed bag of being a help and having snow stuck in my face, but overall a good choice. Now, let me tell you that going to get this man was difficult. I'm a taller man myself, so the snow banks weren't as much of a struggle for me, but unfortunately, when the snow drifts go up to my mid thigh and every step has my foot drop all the way down into the snow, with no resistance it leads to just walking becoming a big task in itself so i'm making my way down the street and it's difficult i get that i'm wearing a motorcycle helmet and it's hard to breathe in that but even when the visor was lifted it was still hard to breathe not only from the snow constantly blowing in my face but also the fact that it was hard to walk I'm in decent shape, but walking through these drifts is no easy task. I just want to reiterate, guys, in case you've forgotten, over a meter of snowfall and the temperature is minus 30. Eventually, I make it down my street and a few streets over, switching between easier and near impossible spots of walking along the way. I get to an automotive business and their building blocked a lot of the snow, which let me walk like normal for once in a long while. I keep tracking, but now I'm near a main road without buildings as densely packed, so the snow drifts are blinding at points, and I need to go and focus on buildings and objects to know where I'm going. Eventually, I make it to the man's car after a good 40 minutes of walking when I only traveled 0.6 miles. So I get to the car and give him some clothes because that's mostly what he was interested in. Didn't care for any gas or food or water, but I made sure to offer it to him to be sure. He changes and gets ready to make the trek himself with my help. After a few minutes, he's ready and we're on our way. He says he talked with someone and he has a house he can go to to be warm and safe for the night that's about 0.3 miles away. All right, sounds good. Let's head there. We make our way there. The man is not well dressed for the weather, but you gotta work with what you've got. He's got regular sneakers on, his pants and my snow pants I gave him, the hat I gave him, the sweater I gave him and his shirt underneath. He throws a blanket on his head as a kind of protection against the wind and snow. It's bad out. My tracks from just a few minutes ago are all but gone, but I know the way I'm going, so it's all right. We walk up the road to the cross street and quickly cross the street. It's hard to see or hear anything, so we can't really tell if a plow is coming, so we act fast to try and stay safe. Then we make it to the side street. Well, needless to say, that street hasn't been plowed in ages. 
Snow drifts near my chest and no pass available, so time to trailblaze and make our own. We need to make it like maybe nine or ten houses into the street, but with snow like this, we're barely progressing at all. I'm dressed for the conditions, so I'm only getting tired. The man I'm helping isn't doing great. Snow is accumulating on his face and he occasionally falls into the snowbanks and needs to recover. When we get near houses that block the wind, we take a break and relax because we need the energy to make it to this house and we can't give up. Well, eventually through more struggles, we do make it to the house. About 0.3 miles in 30 or so minutes. Okay, I've just done some quick mental maths here. By my calculations, that means that in one minute, these guys are going 15 meters. That's it. How slow? I mean, that just tells you this is crazy conditions. The person living in the house graciously lets us both in. I recover by warming up a little bit. The snow that's accumulated on me just starts dripping and melting, which I know is a bad sign for me. So I make my stop short so I'm not drenched in water on my trek back. The man I helped is very thankful and gets comfortable and warm for the first time in hours. But I can't stay long, so I tell him I'm glad he's safe, thank the homeowner, renter, or whoever the man that let me in was, and I go. Now on my way back home, it's a few minutes after midnight. Made it about a mile in about an hour. Not great, but it is what it is. It's another 0.6 or so miles home. My phone is getting caked with ice at this point, but surprisingly, it keeps working throughout the whole trip without any issues. Sorry, yeah, that's very surprising. Normally, if it's that cold, surely your phone will stop working. Fair play. Time to make my way back. I can actually see my trail this time, so I utilize my previous steps to try and make my walk back a little bit easier. I'm starting to struggle, but I know I can't stop. Eventually, I make it back to the street and see a front loader messing around with some snow for, I'm assuming, an emergency vehicle traffic. His windows are all iced and fogged up, and I can't even tell if he sees me. I've got my mission, so I stay the heck out of his way and I keep going. I give a wave and a thumbs up and keep making my way back home. I cross the street quickly because now I know the plows are around, so I gotta be out of their way. I'm back into my neighborhood. Now my trail is gone, but I know where I'm going, or at least I think I do, and I keep making my way. I take a pit stop and call the girlfriend at home and let her know I'm okay and all that jazz so she can relax phone call ends and i keep making my way snow is blocking up my visor and i've been constantly raising and lowering it this whole trip the fog and ice is really blocking my vision so i essentially need to keep the visor up to see and only lower it now to catch my breath or block the heavy snow gusts my progress is really slowing now and my right leg is starting to hurt it feels like i'm pulling something near my hip oh well that's unfortunately not something i can dwell on while in the streets in a snowstorm i keep making my way at a severely reduced pace and take a turn onto my street unfortunately i was a bit exhausted and confused and made the turn one street too early and realized that about halfway down the street where my options i decide i can't really keep going forward here without risking wasting even more time trying to get home so I backtrack to where I made the wrong turn and continue on the correct path. Eventually, I make it one street further and make my correct turn. I'm getting exhausted at this point and my leg is really starting to bother me. No matter, gotta keep on going. I hook a left and I'm on the final stretch home. The foot trail is gone again, so I'm on my own for making a path. Snow drifts are getting bad and extremely difficult to get through. I start counting my paces and I can only make between 10 to 25, usually only 10, before I need to stop and catch my breath gotta keep going that trails on for a while eventually i start walking right up against people's houses if the snow drift made a path to walk where there was less snow i'm close to the home but very very tired thankfully for the most part the snow is at least at my back on this path i keep struggling but i can't give up i'm making nearly no progress but i gotta get home eventually i can see my house light but i still have little energy to make it there 10 steps 10 steps 10 steps i'm close i see the last section of snow to near my house Five steps. My leg is really hurting. Five more steps. Boom. Home. I'm exhausted and ready to drop. Okay, not gonna lie there. I was terrified for a second. I know you've written this post, so you must be alive, but for a second there, I was worried. I make it in the door. Girlfriend helps take off all my clothes and backpack and whatnot. I'm caked in snow, but stayed warm throughout. I tried to take my helmet off, but the snow caked onto the back of my head so much that my hair had ice in it that made them stuck together. And my girlfriend needed to melt the ice with her hand to get it off. I have her check me for frostbite and surprisingly, there's none to be found, which I might debate. At the time of writing this, my ears are still a bit numb and funny feeling, but nothing of much concern here. Almost like the feeling of Novocaine at the dentist, but to a much lesser extent. And then I relax. She has hot cocoa ready for me as I walked in and I just get to relax now. I earn this hot chocolate. Mission success. Helped a man get home safe and got home myself. 
Wow, as I said during that, when you went down the wrong road and you had to decide whether to turn back or keep going, I was genuinely thinking to myself, did you actually make it back? And then I realized, oh, you are right in this post, so you're probably fine. Um, but anyway, had me going there for a second. It is just pretty mental to think what could have happened had that man's brother not posted on Reddit demanding help, you know, because he was at a loss. What was he going to do? You know, his brother is sat in his car with pretty much no gas left, no way of making it back to his house. Like, he's stuck. And if he's got no gas, then he's got no heating and he's going to freeze to death. As I said in the intro, 40 people legitimately died in this. This is scary. Now, incredibly, we actually have a comment from the homeowner who took OP's brother in. This is what he had to say. Thank you, man. You saved the guy's life. May Allah bless you. I'm the homeowner who you guys came to. For a second, I thought you were a first responder with your motorcycle helmet on. It's a happy ending story. The man stayed in my house two nights and he headed out home this morning. He helped me clean some stuff off my driveway before he left. He arrived at his home safely. His car is still stuck on the road. And thank you once again. And then Spore has replied, you helped save him too. Thank you for letting him in to stay with you. You're a hero for letting him in. No problem at all. A very good point because if that man hadn't let him into his home, where could he possibly have gone? Yeah, maybe he could have gone home with Spore, but would he even have made it? I'm not sure. Spore barely didn't. He's, he seems like an absolute supreme human. And finally, we have one more update from OP. Last night, I made a post to ask for help for my brother who was stranded in the snow. After posting, I got lots of suggestions and advice. Then from nowhere, this man came and offered me help. Shout out to this kind human angel Spore for helping my brother out of the snow in Buffalo last night. This man deserves all the love and prayers and gratitude for risking his own life to help save the life of a stranger. My family will forever be indebted to him and I just want to help spread his story in hopes of spreading some good news during this holiday season. Please help me in making this local story known. Thank you and happy holidays. And there we go. That is the power of Reddit because if you think about this logically, without this platform, without r slash Buffalo, a subreddit where you know there are going to be people frequenting it that live in Buffalo, obviously, it's literally the subreddit of a place. This could have been catastrophic. Like, what would have happened? Genuinely. I think his phone was in big trouble he was probably gonna lose battery on it i think he said it was up to his brother to post for him on behalf of him on reddit saying this is where he is we've lost contact but please someone try and find him and as i said and i don't want to keep repeating this but 40 people did legitimately die here it could have been 41 so easily without reddit without spore without the man that let him into his home oh mental what a story anyway guys that is going to do it for this one really hope you enjoyed it a little bit different but i hope you did you know it's a true story of a hundred percent true story and it just shows the power of reddit if you like this a little bit more original than usual and you want to see more stuff like it drop a like on the video comment down below that you did like it and you want to see more and i'll see you guys all tomorrow with a brand new one